Golden Golden. Hi guys. Hi Joe. Hi Alex. Hi. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Um, I've heard the album about five times yesterday, and I think it's a masterpiece. And I hope this album will bring your band in the next level. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And I'm also really happy to do this because. I think Gajira is one of the greatest bands nowadays and every metalhead that I know admire your music and love it. It's really great to, to see you like that and do this. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks so much. It means a lot, you know. We're about to release an album and we're a bit uh, anxious to get it out there, you know. And uh, yeah. having some cool, good feedback before it comes out is awesome. Thanks. I believe our viewers will be glad if you remember something about your past visits to Russia. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, di we, didn't, we didn't play Russia a lot. Uh, we played um, maybe three times on our own and one time with Metallica or something like that. The show with Metallica was incredible. We did two nights in the Olympic Stadium, so that was really, really special. And the times we came by ourselves was too, was too quick, you know. It was one show in Moscow, one in St. Petersburg, and, and that was it. So almost a bit frustrating to not spend more time and, and get to meet more people. And at some point, it's a lot about traveling for us and discovering new countries and new cultures. So next time, I hope we'll, we'll get to spend yeah. more time. We hope to. For the beginning, our channel name is Hangover. What's your favorite cure from Hangover, maybe? <laughs> uh, chilling, you know, sitting in the sun with coffee. I know coffee will, would, could give you a headache, but uh, I'm a coffee addict, so I cannot do without coffee. And uh, I have some of, some of my best memories in my life while hungover. For example, when I got married uh, with my wife, we had a very private uh, wedding, but you know, we celebrated and the day after, I remember we we're just walking in the streets and just enjoying the, the sun on our face. And uh, we were newly married, you know, it was a wonderful, yeah. wonderful feeling. <laughs> what is your best, I'm curious. Uh, I am too young for hangover. <laughs> this is right. a fake, fake word. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, when we prepare for this interview, you, you, great music, outstanding collect performances, environmental and animal difference, deep lyrics, vegetarian, family guy, Kirk Hammett said to you, uh, the, your music is a piece of art. It's a lot. It's a, all the good thing. Maybe you can give us something not so perfect about yourself or the band, except coffee addiction. That's a good question. Uh, what do you want from me? What do you want? You want a headline <laughs> that says something disgusting? Uh, of course, that's all I see is mostly unperfect things about myself. You know, I don't know if there's one thing that's perfect, if anything, you know. Uh, I'm, I, I play guitar, but I do my best to... to, to uh, you know, to be tight and to do to do it right. When I sing, if I listen to myself, you know, the, the takes I'm most of the time completely depressed oh. immediately. And so life is a is a, is a battle. It's not like uh, we have something, you know, an extra power or something magical, and we're glowing in front of the microphone. I need months to record a song because um, I'm I'm very uh, judgment judgmental vocals about my personality the way i speak yesterday i did an interview uh, for kerrang radio i had to record with this freaking microphone and then i had to listen to it and it was a torture to just <laughs> listen to my own voice so is there something that is not perfect about it? okay that, that's enough that's a good that's a good answer <laughs> let's go to the album fortitude what is the message of this album because uh, you always put a lot in your albums in your lyrics in your message how yeah. do you describe this one mm, you know it's it's music and <laughs> there's notes and sounds and and lyrics on top um, that most of the time I yelled. Um, <laughs> dude. Okay. Okay. okay I, sorry. I'm reaching a point in the promotion of this. <laughs> Since your show is called Hangover and you're asking me stuff about, you know, my cure on the hangover and stuff, I would like to, to approach this question with a slightly different angle, uh, which is that I'm not supposed to talk about this too much. I've, I've been talking about this album already too much, yeah. but it's, it's an interesting information for you is that 
for me, it's an exercise to enter interviews and I'd rather do something else, although this is a very nice moment and I'm, I'm nice to, I'm uh, pleased to meet you. But really, I don't think music is supposed to be talked about, yeah. you know, or food. or Absolutely. Or music, you, know? To how the, you know, you describe a meal fine. You just go, oh, there's something lemony about it. There's something otherworldly about this meal. Yeah, eat the meal and then you'll know. You know, whatever I'm going to say about this album, somebody's going to listen to it and, and think the exact opposite. It's very difficult for me. It's almost an exercise. I'm feeling the the blanks here. I'm feeling the gap of uh, lack of things to say. And I, I'm constantly trying to come up with things to say about every single song on the album, why I did it, how I did it. And you know what? The truth is I have no freaking clue. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just going through me. It's fire. And uh, one day I picked up a guitar and it, it made me feel good. And then my brother picked up some drumsticks and we started to bang like every other dumbass on the planet. And uh, next thing you know, I have to explain why and how. And I, the <laughs> truth is, the ugly truth is I have nothing to say. But I can expand. I can stretch it as much as you want. We can tell about this. This, this is, is a great me. album. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. No, um, that's great. Thank you. Uh, what do you think about making this album in USA? Something changed compared to previous. To um, I believe in US music industry is really fast changing. And can you tell about it? Maybe any changes in Silver Court Studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, when we did Magma, we uh, we had just built the studio, so we didn't know. Um, we exactly how it was, was going to resonate and everything. We we put too much padding, you know, mm. padding, you yeah. know, uh, absorbing surfaces on the walls to to not to, to get a more controlled sound. And then we realized over the four years after recording Magma, over the three years, um, that it was not bright enough. It was not. Uh, it could be more alive, you know. So we took off all that padding, and we had a less controlled drum sound, but way shinier and way punchier. You know, there was more response to it. So we did all, the, that's just as an example, but we learned about our studio for, for years. We, uh, we practiced there, we recorded other things. We did like a live jam and stuff. We produced other bands. Um, so it was interesting to approach the recording of Fortitude, knowing much better the studio, knowing m more about our studio. Also, touring and meeting friends uh people that uh own brands and stuff it's great because when it's time to record we can call these guys and say hey could you send us a, an amp uh one of your amps one of your guitars so we had a big collection of instruments in the studio different amps and stuff so we were able to to try a lot of things and we experimented a lot and instead of recording one guitar on every song, the same sound and change it at mixing, we used different amps for different parts, different guitars, different mics. It was a fun uh, process. Tell us please about your live guitar rig now. What do you use? Yeah, for live shows, I use my uh, signature Charvel guitar. I have one here. I can show you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I use this. Looks great. Uh, yeah, there's uh, six strings. And there's uh, this beautiful pickup here that I designed with DiMarzio. It's called Fortitude. <laughs> it's a, sort of a tele shape Telecaster, but here is a little thinner than a real Telecaster. But it's a classic guitar, and it sounds sounds really good. And uh, I'm 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 happy to work with brands that I represent on stage. I'm really using these brands. When I go record an album, I use my signature guitar mostly because it's really made for me. I feel comfortable. I think the sound is great. I use an EVH amp live. We don't use plugins. We don't need uh, simulators and stuff. We love the sound of the EVH, pure and simple. You know, we don't put too many pedals, overdrive, uh, nothing. There's a noise suppre suppressor, nose gate, a tuner. Uh, Wami became part of our language now we need the whammy a lot thing. of whammy <laughs> a lot of whammy <laughs> yeah the first time i tried the whammy i said no that's too 
specific. We so our trade markets do, do not use any effects. Usually, we use we do our effects with our own hands. We take pride in that. You know, we do uh we rub the strings, or we go, or we go, or you know. Yeah, yeah, Tom so, Morello style. Exactly, Tom Morello style. But Tom Morello also he uses a whammy. It's funny. Um, yeah. He's not my biggest influence, but he's definitely one influence. But the minute I tried the whammy, I'm like, fuck, I can't go back now. I have to. <laughs> Maybe we can continue with uh, your neural DSP. In the beginning of the year, there was a release. Yes. Uh, you know, it's going to sound like a paradox because I just mentioned using yeah. an amp, <laughs> you know, and I tried uh, Axe FX, I tried Camper. Uh, if you guys are familiar with all that, I understand you are. It's good. It's great. Don't get me wrong. And we played with bands that use it. Metallica is using Axe FX. Fucking Metallica is using it. So it can't <laughs> be bad. Uh, camper, uh, you know, Mastodon is using Camper. I Again, use the Camper. Kevin, oh, you use camp, Camper. Uh, but I mean, you know, our artists that we've seen playing in, in front of a lot of people who go behind and boom, there's a little Camper and a bunch of dummy cabs to... to make people think they're using real cabs. Um, but we we are we were that close to switch to that kind of stuff live because it's way easier when you go play super far on a flight and it's good to have that. So we, we're gonna start to upgrade uh, with that. But the what the new old DSP guys did is that they, they, they broke down one of my amps live and they made a plugging plug in with it by replacing every component in data. The sound is incredible. I am blown away by the quality of basically from now on, I will always have that option to use the new old DSP for professional stuff, for albums, for maybe uh, uh, live or to reamp a guitar. It's really good. But what I like the most about this plugin, about the Gojira new old DSP plugin, is that it offers a, a wide range of possibilities and combinations that you can try between the heads, the cabs and the pedals, you know? And in real life, it would take, you know, a whole week to get all the cables, the batteries, the room, the other things. And then when you want to switch something, you have to crawl behind your amp, you know what I mean? Yeah. This in real life yeah. is very complicated. So you have that option to, hey, what happens if I put a whammy and a chorus and this head and a super high gain distortion sound and then you have it. You just have to click and you can record the presets like any plugin. So what a luxury, you know, for some, it's, it allows creativity, I find. It's not just a guitar plugin. It's it's also a wide range of effects and stuff, which is really cool. Come back to the album, maybe. What's your favorite song? I love Hold On, really. I don't know why it's my, it's oh, my cool. favorite one. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, Hold On is actually one of my, my favorite. But, you know, they're, they're all my favorite in a way because they're, they're my babies. You know, it's like, do you prefer your, your son or your daughter? You know? Uh, so about concert set list then maybe. How do you choose which song will be on the concert set list live shows? We have a feeling of what song is going to work. Uh, for us and for the crowd, sometimes we're wrong, you know, we, we insist playing a song and something doesn't click. <laughs> and sometimes it's that song that we ignore for a long time. And then we finally play it and it's boom, it's a bomb. You know, there's something that I don't explain something very subtle. There's a magic operating sometimes with some songs, uh, flying whales. I didn't think it was going to become a thing, you know, and every time we play flying whales, You know, people go nuts. And if we don't play it, it's a problem, you know. Great so, song. There's a mystery. I don't know which one will work. I guess we'll have to uh, try them all. I love Hold On for sure. But the intro could be a problem, though. Yeah. There's like 12 tracks of vocals at first. Um, but we could skip the intro and do a live version. You know? Do you use playbacks on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Pro Tools, tracks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually try to avoid it. We yeah. don't. But sometimes at the end of a song, we put uh, an outro, you know, yeah. when we play the shooting star, down, 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 you know, at the end, we go, do, down. When you hear a melody, it's Mario hitting a pad and then the melody starts. But maybe we'll have to use some tracks live. I don't, I don't have a major problem with that, but I like to keep it raw. Keep it real. You see Nirvana, Nirvana. with track. 
there was no such things uh, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made an album cover art can you tell us about it well at first i was uh just trying to not think too much listen to music and draw i spent hours and hours making sketches i have a bunch of notebooks here uh, filled with uh you know i have a notebook here oh this yeah. is <laughs> you know and i have all these uh sketches and you know and tries and, and i i do things crazy things that are really different i try a bunch <laughs> of stuff um you know for the title i you know i, I did a bunch of sketches like this yeah um, and the final you know even the writing for the you know for the cover uh, so i spent hours and hours and hours i did stuff whoa, like that whoa. at first you know could have been something more sophisticated i put some golden um but in the end it's it's not a matter of um you know which one looks best on the paper but that was one of the originals it's um an indigenous person a little more clearly uh, but there's a sort of uh, an aura like a saint what i want to represent is not uh not that the indigenous people are saints but but more that they they have a power because they're because they're connected to nature so they have something they have a glow that we don't have because they know how to live with nature it's pretty uh, heavily influenced by uh, ind indigenous culture to tribute to all indigenous of the of this earth where do you get this intention to stay fortitude? I mean, a lot of people have doubts today about the way of living or thinking. What's your recipe to stay fortitude? I don't have a recipe, unfortunately. I just, uh, uh, I wish I could be strong all the time, um, but it's not the case at all, you know? Also being strong all the time is not necessarily the thing. I think sometimes it's okay to express weakness and even necessary to mm -hmm. to vent or to let go. I don't know about you guys in Russia. Maybe in <laughs> Russia it's normal. Yeah, yeah, we were the same. The time, like, a, like a bear. In the morning, <laughs> after coffee. <laughs> after coffee. <laughs> But for us French people, it's okay to put a scarf and, and, and to, to complain about shit and to feel weak. It's okay to have a balance and to... But overall, I would say the idea of uh, fortitude is the idea of staying strong when you, when things are going, you know, bad. There's a vibe in the air these days of end of the world. You know, there's something doomy. Communication is, is getting, you know, uh, in more and more intense. We communicate so easily. Now you, you guys are in Russia, I'm in France, and we can communicate like that. And at the speed of light, it's incredible. It's marvelous human inventions, but also it has uh, pros and cons. The result is that we're over communicating without having the things to say, without, without the meditation, without the reflection, without letting you know, something grow inside. We over communicate and then we empty ourselves and we don't have anything to say, but we're still talking. Uh, yeah. Something like that about our times, very, very uh, uh, dramatic, I find. I'm not, I don't want to say that these days are worse than before. I don't want to say it was better before. I think uh, there's always a sign of the time, you know, it's, it's something good, something bad. What do you think about relationships between humanity and nature nowadays? Awareness grows or are we speeding to the apocalypse? The relationship between um, humans and nature, that's interesting that we even asking the question because we are nature, you know? So the question is, you know, how did we get to detach ourselves from nature? We lost a, a, a primal connection. You take one guy that lives in the city, you know, with his little glasses and latte, put him on top of a mountain. He's not going to last more than three hours. You know, he doesn't know how to survive on top of a mountain because there's too much wind and he's, he's scared. Oh, you know, so we're not, we're not really, uh, We grew as a species, we took over the whole world, but we had to put clothes on, we had to find tricks, uh, create weapons, and we adapted to cold weather and to hot weather, and, and we even adapt to the, the, the weather inside our homes with AC and heat. And we became super strong by our civilization, but super weak somehow. 
I mean, do humanity understand what we're doing with uh, nature or not? I don't know. It seems uh, that people are aware of the problem. It's the first step, yeah. But some people deny, deny mm. it. They say the world is fine. And in a way, they're right. The world is fine. The world will survive us. The planet will survive us. Uh, like in another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, we disappear, you know. well, in a couple million years, there will be new species that, because we killed a lot of animal, a, a lot of animals. We made a lot of uh, species disappear. Um, unfortunately, that would be our legacy to the world if we disappear. That's there's going to be less animals on this planet. Um, but oxygen will regenerate oceans will thrive again forest will take over the cities not a problem the question is our you know future as a species and it's it's interesting you and me will be gone you know but I, yeah. i'd be curious to see what's going to happen to humanity are we going to make it or not and why do we care also why do you care why do i care It's it's interesting for children I mean, I have, for for future generations. I believe we have to care about it. Yeah, because it goes pretty fast, right? In our lifetime, we're experiencing global we're experiencing global warming. But maybe we're not good for this planet. Maybe we're not good for animals, and we we better disappear. But at the same time, it's it it's weird to say that because there's so much beauty in, uh, in humans. You know, there's so much potential of uh, creativity, compassion. Um, And music, Building, uh, yeah, humor, music, uh, subtleties, poetry, uh, all these things, they have to be there for a reason. They have to be resonating somehow with the universe and make it, maybe we're contributing to expand an invisible consciousness that we call God or something, you know? I, I choose to believe that there is a purpose. But of course, I see clearly that we look like a freaking parasite, mostly of the planet so it'd yeah, be nice to change that be like super beings you know i don't know i got some special question uh, i believe nobody asked you about this before how do you think french language affects your lyrics because a lot of uh, french words describe some unique feelings like deja vu Risky view, uh, esprit d'escalier. Sorry for my pardon for my French. Of course, uh, of course, in many ways, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have um, the American or English reflex of using a certain saying or the way I'm going to formulate my sentence. Often will be based on French thinking, so it it makes some uh, sentences original for an English person or an American person. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it in your lyrics. This is great. This makes you something special. Yeah, I'm not trying to cultivate that. To be honest, I'm I'm, I'm very fascinated by languages, and I, my wife is Lithuanian, for example. I'm trying to pronounce Lithuanian words properly, you know. And she said, "You're fine. I understand." <laughs> and and she said, no, I want to say it right. You know, and it's it's interesting. I have that passion for languages, and I'm trying really to to get the English uh, flow of uh, speaking and stuff. But I'm 44 now, so I'm starting to give up on, you know, <laughs> reaching perfection. And there's no such thing anyway. But yeah, to answer your question, yes, I think it does change the way I, uh, I write or it makes, it gives a little twist. Team about Brothers and Metal. I see ACDC, Arc Enemy, Architects, Sepulcha. Lamb of God, Pantera. It seems like it's advantage to make music with siblings. Can you tell how exactly it helps? Oh, in many, 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 many ways. So first of all, we have the same education, you know, same parents. Um, if there's a problem in the family, we are going to feel that problem together simultaneously at the same time, you know? If there's a, a drama in the family, we lose somebody or or something great happens, or there's this influence in the house. We had a dad, uh, uh, an artist, you know, he's he's an artist, he's a painter. So we were watching him do, and, and our mom was giving yoga lessons. So we both benefited from that. Um, also, we, we both suffered from not belonging where we grew up in a small town in France with an American mom and a dad that came from another background. Um, so we were not fully accepted in the village, you know, for example, in the village I grew up, they play rugby a lot and they hunt and fish. Uh, and I was, you know, we were playing metal and playing baseball. Um, 
Okay. So, 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 you know, we have that same sort of condition, geographical, <laughs> historical, you know, so already in our DNA, also the same parents, so biological sort of thing. So the DNA, the condition, the, the way we were raised, um, everything we witnessed together, and something that I wasn't talking about too much before, but now I realize, wait, there's that also. That reason is super important, is that we get a lot of time in the same house when we board. What do we do? Boom, we go play music, you know? When I come back from school, my brother is here with his drumsticks waiting, you know? <laughs> and we play, you know? And he's five years younger than me and he's waiting for me with the drumsticks. I'm like, yeah, hold on, throw my bag, <laughs> go and we play for fucking 40 minutes. Well, we could never do that with even a neighbor, you know? Even if yeah. next house, we would, so we would play a lot. So that's uh, what I think. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk about it because after your Lord Wire interview some days ago, there was a comment in the section below. Everybody is talking about Joe and Mario, and I mean, I don't blame them, but boys, can we just acknowledge Christian and Jean Michel for two for a minute? They're amazing too. How are they doing? Can you tell us? I don't feel too bad for them because they, they really enjoy the situation, you know? <laughs> Mario and me do all the work while they're uh, riding their bicycles and, and, and you know, and chilling and, and drinking cocktails. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this this, this is the answer. Way chilling. <laughs> no, they, you know, they, 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 they don't want to do interviews. They don't feel like they want to be under the spotlight. Mario and me are taking that, you know, we're embracing that uh, whole interview thing with pleasure because we want to push for the band and we want to work for the band. We're always pushing to do something uh, sooner than later. And they're completely chill, you know? They, they like to go on tour, sure, but, you know, they, they're not in a hurry to jump back in the studio to make a new album and, and to fucking, you know, not sleep at night thinking about riffs. You know, they're more chill. They have other things going on and they, they found a, a good balance in their lives. But I know that yesterday, Jean-Michel did an interview for a bass magazine. You know, but cool. we have, each time we have an album, we say, okay, you guys, would you like to make it, you know, answer interviews? And they're like, nope. <laughs> so good for them. Yeah. The last question. A lot of bands postponing the release of the album because of the COVID, but not Gajira. This is the way it works for you. How do you plan to do this without live shows nowadays a lot? And why? It's, this is your... Your only way to do, you make music and you give it to people, you don't wait. At first, we were supposed to release the album last year in June, and we postponed it, you know, to September. Um, and then we postponed it again because we saw that things were only getting worse. And of course, you know, people, uh, a lot of people know about this, but when you're, when you're a musician, you need to go out on the road to, to make money and to to make your album come alive. Um, so releasing an album and not touring is considered a commercial suicide almost, you know? It's, it, so it's, it's difficult, but we couldn't wait any longer. We had to just release it already. Been sitting on it for too long, so now it's time. Otherwise, we're just gonna start to be bitter and, 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 and mad and start to break shit you know <laughs> okay okay thank you very much for having us this was a great time with you and uh, we wish you really good with your album because it's great we listen it one every day more more and more times in, in Gajira grows every album more and more i believe you are the your your future is like metallica pantera or something like that i i, I believe in it <laughs> within my heart oh man yeah I'd, you know i'd love to to buy a house and and you know a swimming pool and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> i will see about that i i hope you're right but if you're if you're not right it's okay too uh, I'm already very happy, so it's really cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very thank, much. thank you, everybody. Thanks. That was great, and uh, uh, give my best to Russia. <laughs>